Exciting times every single Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central, 1 Eastern. I actually like to host an interview. So I'm going to make a phone call to a really good buddy of mine who lives in Chicago. And we get to have an interview and ask another trader who is very profitable all about how he did it and how it works. Um, so let me bring that uh, phone call on. Give me about 20 seconds. Here we go. Hello? Mr. Jason Chase. Hey, how's it going, Brad? Good, man. How are you? Just uh, enjoying some of this cold weather we've got. I'm sure you heard. <laughs> yeah. Next. Negative 40 uh, wind chills plus. Dude, that is nuts. Did you go outside today? It is. Oh, I did. Yeah, I, I went out with the dogs. And, you know, of course, being a man, I had to go out there and breathe the cold just to do it. That's so right. I could say I stood out in the weather and uh, took some hot water, threw it up in the air to, you know, to see how that whole thing works out. That was kind of cool. <laughs> Watching it freeze. Did it actually <laughs> freeze? Yeah, it did a little. Yeah, it, did. it fell on my jacket and it was uh, frozen like a little water pellet, little ice balls. That's when cool. it fell on my jacket. It was pretty cool. I love it. I love it so much. Let me give everyone just a super quick intro because uh, we're in the trading room right now and the person I'm speaking with is a good trading buddy of mine. I've met this, I've had the beautiful opportunity to meet this guy in the flesh uh, on multiple occasions. Him and his wife are incredible people. So Jason, tell everyone just a little bit about your background, man. Where are you from and how did you get involved in trading? Gosh, uh, I mean, I'm from Texas originally. I spent, uh, I've had two careers in my life, actually three now if I count trading, which I kind of, I do consider a career now. But uh, my background was in the mortgage industry. I owned a mortgage company for about five years, 13 years in the mortgage business, right out of high school. Uh, after that, I got out before the whole thing crashed and the market went down and surprisingly, I got into roofing. Um, so I, I sold roofs, uh, moved from city to city uh, chase the storm, selling roofs, uh, all over the country. Ended up here in Chicago. And, uh, prior to moving to Chicago, I did get into trading and I got into trading, uh, through an old friend, Christine, uh, Kwan, whom, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, I remember seeing her charts. Uh, I was at her place in Atlanta one time and she had all these charts on her screen and I was like, wow, blown away. And she was telling me that she told me she was learning how to trade. And, uh, you were one of the teachers at the time. And, uh, I was just kind of like, wow, I looked at the charts and I thought I could never do this. <laughs> what are you looking at? You know, all the indicators, yeah. all the lines drawn and it you know, kind of blew my mind. And so she started trading some options and she took a little bit of my money and made some money. And I thought, well, if she could do it, I could do it. So uh, from there I got into, I started taking some of the classes and, you know, I, I met you and you know, I followed you to real life trading and, uh, you know, tried to trade ever since. You know, and I take, it take me a while. Uh, to kind of get to a point where I can be consistent. Oh, let's talk about that because that's a big, that, that's, that's one of the reasons I want to have you on today because I want to celebrate you being a consistent, <laughs> profitable trader. What made that switch, man? Like how, how long did it take and what was the pinnacle? You're like, I got it. It's happening. I mean, realistically from 2012 to uh, 2015, 2016, I mean, I blew multiple accounts. So, you know, what, four or five years? You know, I'd, I'd have good trades and I'd have bad trades. And, you know, I'd, I went through every bad trading habit that you can imagine. I've, you know, being in sales all my life, I'm pretty competitive, so I always had to win. So when I lost, and it was a big loss because I would let my losses run because I was always hoping it would turn back around, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'd, I'd revenge trade often, over and over and over. And uh, it was just a spiral down, as you know. I mean, many of us have been there and, you know, probably still go through it. Uh, so I did that a lot. And like I said, I, I blew so many accounts and I quit trading so many times. And then, uh, and then at one point, um, you know, I stopped trading stocks, you know, I was with, uh, did real life trading for a while. And then I started trading Forex mm -hmm. and, uh, I concentrated on the Euro US dollar and that's all I did. And I traded it every day. You know, I'd, I'd wake up at two, 3 AM, uh, trade through the London into the U S hours. And, uh, you know, I, I would lose. And then at some point, um, Last year, uh, I started being consistent. I, I, I identified what my habits were, my bad habits were, which I knew all along, but I wrote them down and I put uh, stickers up all over my computers, on my screens, you know, follow the plan. You know, once I lost, I would, 
I'd make myself step away. And I, I just had to remind myself of all my bad habits and what I did uh, to try to narrow down, um, you know, what I needed to stop and how, what I had to learn about myself. Because, yeah. you know, trading is really about yourself. You know, there's, you could find a lot of plans. And so that's, that's what I did. And it took me a while in, to, to knock out the bad habits that I had. <laughs> and now, I mean, after, uh, at, you know, there's so many trading plans. There's so many ways you can make money in the market. Mm -hmm. And you always stress yeah. that the, uh, oh, what was he always said? The specialist. <laughs> the specialist yeah. is the, something you said about specialists. It always rang true in my ear. And uh, so I found something to work. You know, I, I tried, I back traded so many different things until I found something that I liked. And uh, I stick to it. I mean, it, it either works or it's not, it doesn't. I'll have several alarms go off on my charts. And uh, I'll look at it when my alarm goes off and I'll wait and it either confirms for me or it doesn't. And so, you know, I don't chase. I don't, uh, I don't rush into trades. I make myself available for a trade. So it's either there or it's not. I love that, man. So why, what, uh, what drew you to Forex? Was it the hours that you could trade? Was it the liquidity? Was it the um, margin? What was it? No, actually it was uh, one of my, you know, my Jamie, she does physical therapy and uh, one of her patients, uh, he was a, he's an old, uh, old Filipino guy and he's been trading for years. And uh, she told him, oh, my husband trades where, you know, she's giving him physical therapy one day and he told him he, tra he traded Forex. He's like, yeah, I haven't come by. I'll, I'll tell him what I show him what I do. And so at first I wasn't interested. I thought, ah, you know, I, I had another bad bout of trading. So I was kind of done. Yeah. And I thought about it. I was like, well, let's just go over there, see what he has to say. So I go over there and he shows me what he's doing. And really what caught my eye was seeing that he was making, you know, 25, 30 grand in a day. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I thought if he can do it, I can do it. No, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not there. <laughs> I'm not yeah. making 25 grand in a day. I, I wish, but, uh, eventually, you know, maybe yeah. I keep, I keep doing what I do consistently. Um, and so he showed me what I did and, uh, I liked it. I liked the hours of the trading and, uh, I liked that I could just focus on, you know, one instrument. And so that's what I did. I, I started trading it, you know, every day and, um, and I stuck with it, got through my bad habits and here I am. What broker do you use for your U S dollar Euro trading? Uh, I use Oanda. I've used, uh, FXC, uh, or Forex.com. There was another one, FXCM. I believe they were uh, shut out. Uh, uh, they can't. They couldn't have do any more business in the U.S. anymore. So, so now it's Oanda. They have a great app that I like. I like it on night mode, so I can turn it on, and it doesn't uh, blare my, you know, blare my eyes uh, when I'm trade or when I get up in the middle of the night at one or two, three in the morning. So, it's good. Beautiful. So, tell us a little bit about your strategy, man. How do you? What, what do you do? What do you look at? Is it at moving averages, RSI, Bollinger Bands? I mean, I, I use a combination of moving averages. I, I'm not going to say exactly, uh, just because it's something that took me years to, I think, to figure out what I do. And I think every trader has to kind of learn and figure out what they like. But, you know, I, I watch moving averages. I wait for retests, uh, and I follow trends. And I, I work within uh, the Bollinger Bands, so I keep it really simple. So, you know, I, I don't ever try to. Hmm. What, what, you do use Bollinger Bands. That's cool. What, is it uh, two standard deviations, 20, like, just basic Bollingers? Yeah, you know, I, I set a standard deviation at uh, the two, I do two, three, and four. I've got three Bollinger bands that I like. Okay. Um, I just like the look out of it. Uh, at it, I, I use it on a chart. I put it on my chart some time ago, and I like the way it looks. And so I kept three on there at two, three, and four, and uh, the moving average at fifty, and uh, that's what I use. So I, you know, I follow trends. I use the thirty minute. Uh, I like the thirty minute trend. It gives me a nice little trend, and then I'll use the five uh, for entry and take it from there. But it's all based on moving averages and the, the bulge bands, and I try to play in between them. I like it. So, what uh, as far as your entries and things? So you're looking at the 30 minute chart. You're looking for trends. Keeping it pretty simple. You just zoom into the five minute and pull your entry. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I, I wait for my alarms to go off to let me know when I've got something that may be actionable, and uh, you know, I wait for it to retest. You know, if I'm going short, then I'll wait for it to. Uh, you know, I'll wait for it to move up towards the top Bollinger Band uh, before I make an entry. I mean, if it if it if it looks good and it plays out, then I'll do it, and uh, vice versa. If I go, if I'm going long, then I'll wait for it to hit towards the bottom. Now, it's not always a bottom. Sometimes I'll use the VMAs as my supporter resistance. Mm -hmm. It just depends on we you know what the rest of the charts are doing. And I'll I'll glance I, I glance at the four hour. You know, the four hour will give you a bigger picture of what's going on. <clears throat> So the big yeah. question, man. I mean, why why stick to trading? So you blew out multiple accounts. You, you know, like I said, you lost a lot of money. You got to that frustrating part. 
I mean, how did you how did you keep funneling the money into your accounts? Like, did, did you uh, were you just working at your job and just kept putting money in, and just kept trying? It? Is that what it was? Yeah, that's what it was. I mean, I I knew I had something because I you know I could I could identify good trades, and I I thought if I could just stop the bad habits, you know, I knew that I I knew that I could I could do this, and uh, so I kept at it. You know, I I knew it was I knew all the bad habits, and I knew all the when I lost money, you know, it was a matter of not setting my stops or letting the letting the loss run, uh, just hoping it would turn around, you know, hope guys last in this business. So can't really have any hope. And, uh, so I, I knew if I could, if I could wipe away my, my bad habits, I, I could do something. I could be profitable. I could be consistent if I actually stuck to my own personal trading plan. And you and I sat down to put a trading plan together. Uh, you remember a few years ago yep. and, uh, you know, of course I didn't follow it. <laughs> <laughs> So, but I knew if I knew if I did, I, I thought I was good at identifying, um, you know, good entries for short and longs and um, that was it. So I just, I, I just kept at it. I was consistent. I didn't want to walk away from this thinking, God, I lost again. Yeah. And, you know, eventually I just, I started winning and, you know, I'd go on uh, a 16 trade win streak or a 19 trade win streak. I've yet to hit 20. Anytime I've gotten close to 20, then I usually have a loss or two. Um, or three, you know, I, I still have losses. If nothing's perfect, but I keep my losses minimal. So, you know, I love that man. Got to be profitable. That nineteen win streak. That's huge. It is <laughs> over over how many days? Like, is that nineteen trades in a day, or is that a week, a month? How uh, that the ni the nineteen was about a week and a half. Week and a half of trades. Mm -hmm. Week and a half. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. So over a month, how many trades would you say you take on average? Gosh, I mean, I, I could take five or six trades in a day, um, and sometimes I'll just take one. Let's see. Let me just look at it. I, I keep a diary of all my trades, too. Okay. Um, let's say just in this last week, let's say the last five days, I usually do, I do a five-day average. I've got 36 trades in the last five days, so that's a lot. 36. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Awesome. And over those trades, like how, how do you judge your pips? Is it, is it a pip rule? Do you do that? Is it a percentage of gains? Is it a dollar amount? Is it a target? How do you determine? No, I mean, I, I keep, I keep a loose uh, stop. So, you know, sometimes a stop may be five pips, maybe, you know, sometimes it's eight. It just depends on my support and resistance levels. So I'll watch the candles. I'll look for, you know, I, I, when I'm in a trade, I'm constantly trying to identify support and resistance levels, um, either on the 30 minute or the five minute. So if I see those break, then I'll exit the trade. You know, if the market, I try to keep my mind open. So that way, you know, if the market gives giving me information to, you know, that it's going the other way, uh, I'll get out. Mm. So. Do you ever move your stops, like trailing your stops, or do you just let let it stay at your original price? I mean, usually I I try I don't I don't sit in trades for too long. Um, I like to be out within about 30, 45 minutes, unless it just keeps going. You know, I've, I've had a trade uh, trend down throughout the whole day for, you know, 80 to 100 pips. And so then I'll start moving my stop. Otherwise, um, I'll take my 10 pips. You know, I'll, I'll trade with seven to 10 contracts per uh, per trade. So if I get 10 pips out of it, you know, then I'm done. And I'll, I'll close it out and I'll wait for a new entry. Gotcha. And that's, like again, on the five-minute chart. So let me... Uh let me pull into the five minutes. So what, what was the most recent trade you took on the Euro US dollar? Let me see if I can see. Uh, that. Yeah, let me, let me pull up the chart here. So here's this. Five All minutes. right. I did the most recent was uh, this morning. Oh, no, I got the wrong chart pulled up. I, I trade, I do trade other, in, other instruments now. So I, I do, I do a whole a gambit of uh, Forex. Okay. Now, so I set my alarms on a lot of things, but it's still a lot, mainly the uh, the euro. Um, I got into a trade at uh, six thirty seven ish, in the six. Yeah, right about here. Okay, I can see that trade. So that was. So you see where it kind of it formed a little resistance there with a the, uh, four or five candles. Uh huh. Uh, to me, it was starting to trend down, as you can see if you look back. And then I took it to the bottom of the band, and that was my trade. That was it. Boom. Very nice. And so you said that was uh, seven seven contracts. Yeah, that was seven contracts. Uh, it was just it was actually right under ten pips with fees, so uh, almost seven hundred bucks. Beautiful, beautiful trade, man. So how how did two thousand and eighteen end for you in your trading? Was that was that the most profitable? Was that the most profitable year you've ever had? It has. Yeah. 
That's your outside for me. I, 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 showed, I showed you some of my screenshots yes. <laughs> when I was having really good, really good days. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely the best year in trading I've ever had. Man, that's amazing. And again, I'm just I'm happy to hear it because I know that you're you're someone you're one of those people that you're not going to quit until you make it happen. And that that, that and I was, yeah. Oh no, that's so true. I mean, because I I I did walk away a few times, and you know I you know a lot of people. I mean, you're in this business, so you know a lot of people that blow through accounts and they walk away and they never do it again. But you know all the losing and all the accounts blown and all the hard lessons, you know, kept me in it, you know, because I saw that there was something I could do it. I, I thought I had some kind of an edge and it was just figuring myself out before, um, you know, before I could turn that corner. Figuring yourself out, man. Okay. So then be honest with us, Jason. What's the, what were the, you, you mentioned holding your losers too long. What was like two or three other bad trades that you had to overcome? Oh, uh, revenge trading, uh, trading too much. <laughs> the revenge, revenge trading was the biggest. Uh, even with, even when I was trading with you, with real life trading and, and we were working on my plan, you know, I traded too much. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll still take a lot of trades now, but it, only if they fall and come my confirmation. Mm -hmm. uh, I see it. Um, revenge trading was probably the worst. Yeah. Uh, following that. <laughs> well, so how do you, how do you decipher then between revenge trading now, like, like you're getting into a second trade, how, how do you make that distinction? Is it, is it a pattern that you're looking for? Is it a breakdown that you're like, okay, well, I, I got stopped out of this trade. This is not a revenge trade because X, Y, Z. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I wait for my alarms. I've got alarms that I've got uh, set specifically um, on, you know, several different pairs in Forex. And mm -hmm. so I can't, I don't look for a trade until my alarm goes off. Nice. So you know, if I lose, I lose and, you know, I, I, I wait. And so I just walk away, go do something else. I'll read or eat breakfast or walk the dogs or I'll go to sleep because I get up so early in the morning sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'll just go to sleep. So then, so uh, I mean, what I do, I got, like what, what's your schedule look like? Because if you're trading four X, you know, when, when are, when do you wake up? When do you work out? Cause you're a gym guy, you know, you and your wife are both just gym rats, totally shredded. What, how does your schedule look like on a day to day basis? I mean, by 8.30, I'm usually getting in bed so I could read. You know, I read every night before I go to bed. So by 9.30, I, I'm asleep, and then my first alarms are going off. I'll set alarms to go off for myself to wake up on my Apple Watch because it'll vibrate you awake, so then wake up the wife. And I'll start looking at charts. I'll see if there's any alarms that have gone off and, um, you know, take it from there. If I don't see anything, I'll set it for another hour, wake up at 3, and then usually at 4, I'm up. You know, I'm, I'm going to wake up, so, you know, regardless. And um about waiting for alarms to trade. And then, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm done early, I'll take a nap and um, then eat some breakfast and try to make it to the gym. I haven't been as strict, as good as going to the gym as I, have, as I used to. Yeah. So it's, that's a bit of a slower process. Wife's definitely got me there. Uh, but that's that. So now that it's winter and my real job, my business is, you know, done for the year or done until spring, I'll, I'm doing this full time. Man, that's killer. So even though you do have a job, you're going to, Continue your job and trade full time for how long? What's your goal? You know, I'd like to I'd like to do this more full time and then cut my business down to part time next this this year. This year. So okay. that's kind of that's kind of the goal. That's the goal. I love it. So what uh, when when you're setting your alarms, what time do you go in and get everything set up? What does that look like? Is that you know right before you go to sleep or later in the day? Uh, it's right, usually before I go to sleep, I'll have my alarm set on my, I've, you know, on your watch, on your Apple watch or your phone, you can set up all kinds of alarms and you need to turn them on. Um, I'll look at news events. Um, so I'll, you know, I'll look to trade around news events uh, on the Euro. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll set those alarms like before the, before the event so I can see what happens um, and then see if my alarms go off. So usually two o'clock is my first alarm. Gotcha. Now sometimes, sometimes I'll take a trade going into the night. So if I have a trade that goes into the night, um, I'm up. I've, I've set my alarms every 30 minutes to wake up so I could watch the trade. Gotcha. Okay, nice. And I had a question that uh, Claude is asking in the chat pane, saying, have you ever had to deal with a flash crash like the one that happened on January 3rd? Uh, yes, yes. I've, I've, been on the, I've been on the losing ends of big crashes, so that's why – uh, I usually on news events, so I'll try to get out around a news event, so I'm not, um, so I'm not in the trade. So these things will move like 50 plus pips each way before it determines the direction. So usually around news events, I'm out. I, I'm almost, 
99.9% out during any kind of uh, big news event. I know it's coming. Uh, Do you use Forex Calendar or Forex? Yeah, I use, I use Forex, Forex Factory. Um, and then TradingView has uh, alerts on there too. So it'll show you. But if you're talking about the one that I know you're talking about, I think that was uh, that was at night where it went up like 70 pips and then down another 70 pips. I was completely out. I, I didn't do anything. Gotcha. Yeah. Then we, I'm trying to scroll back on my screen so that people can see it. Yeah, that was that was a wild move. What what caused that? I mean, that was the Brexit vote. Yeah, I think I think uh, let me, I'm thinking about that. It was it was some kind of news. Uh, I don't know Trump something. <laughs> 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 And I, I just I had another buddy who was trying to trade around it, and he caught some. But you know, anything when it's so volatile, my you know your plans go out the window. And that's another thing about forex that it it can be so volatile. So mm -hmm. that's why I like to, I like to stay out during news events. I'll wait for the news event to happen, see what the news is, if it's good for the dollar or you know good for the euro, vice versa, yeah. and uh, and then try to try to look at it from there. Okay. You know, if my if my alarm went off, and uh, then I'll try to look for a trade if it confirms for me. So I mean, you're getting a pretty good amount of sleep. You're going to bed around nine thirty. First alarm's going off at two. I mean, that's you know a good five and a half hours of sleep right at it. Yeah. And yeah. if nothing happens at two, you go back to bed and then wake up at four. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll do it. I'll get up again at three, and I'll look and see if I have any alarms. And you know, usually by then there's something. So uh, if I see something, then I'll set a secondary alarm. You know, this is where it's got to hit for me to think about getting in a trade. You know, once my alarm goes off, then I wait for a retest. Um, before I look at it, and so I'll set a secondary alarm to notify him if it hits here, then this is where I'm going to short, or if it hits here, this is where I'm going to go long. Yeah, that's a really good takeaway. The alarms. And how did you practice like the conditioning of you get an alarm, you pull it up, you look at it, and you more or less you're you're going to be taking the trade because the alarm is going off at a price that you want to get in. I think that just takes conditioning, right? Did you practice that with big yeah. money or small lots at first, or how did you tip go into that world? A small lot, small lots at first. Okay. Well, the first the first alarm that I set just tells me that there's potentially going to be a, a you know an actionable play. So that first alarm is not the one that I I'm going to get in. So I'll look at that and that tells me whether I'm going to go long or short. And then I'll wait for it to retest up to a certain level or uh, down to a certain level. And then I'll look for a pivot or uh, or a con kind of confirm reversal on my charts. And that's where I'll get in. Mm. Nice. I love that. That's cool. But and then I also, you know, my favorite is divergences. I love playing divergence. Ooh, how so, do you spot that? Uh, how do I spot it? Uh, you can. There's a lot of scripts uh, that you can use on TradingView. I don't know if anybody uses scripts. Uh, you know, and visually you can see it, uh, but I do have scripts that will alert me too. Um, so if I get if I have a divergence and it's also happened to be, you know, an actual play that I like uh, after my alarm's gone off, then I'll take it. I love that. So Hermal is asking, uh, was it the same routine that your Filipino client was making the twenty to thirty thousand dollars a day? Uh, no, his is a little different. Okay, his is a little different. Yeah, uh, but he again, uses, uh, <laughs> what's that? I said again, just proves, man. Like everyone's everyone's gonna have their own little flavor of the markets. Yeah, I mean, he, he would do stuff, and I just you know, I think he just had a great feel for the market. I mean, I you know, some people just have a, a great feel for which way the market's going, Agreed. and uh, it didn't work for me. And so I, I couldn't. I tried it, and I tried it over and over. Uh, but again, I was probably I was still going through my plans and myself too. Um, but it just never worked. It didn't work. It didn't work perfect like it did for him. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, you got to find whatever works for you. Because if it works for somebody, it doesn't mean it's going to work for you. But you got to find what you're. Doing. You've had to get close with uh, you know close to that goal with 17 trades starting in a day. I mean, you had to get close to that that uh, twenty thousand dollars in a day, right? Um. Uh, no, not quite. Okay. Not quite. Yeah, no, not quite. Let me know when you hit it. I will. Just I will. <laughs> I know you will. I have full faith, man. Oh, I will. Well, I mean, I, I started out doing. I started out with five dollar pips, um, and then when I started, when I when I was working on new plans, I was just doing like point oh one lots, uh, just trying out new plans. But I slowly worked from five dollar pip to ten. Remember, I was telling you. I think over the last couple of years, hey, I'm up to I'm up to four contracts or four yeah. and a half contracts, and so now I'll you know anywhere from seven to ten contracts I'm playing with now. Beautiful. Is there any time of the day that you won't trade? Like is, like other than news? Like is there just a specific time where like I'm not going to trade this time? Yeah, you know I don't like trading. I I found my worst trade sometimes happen during the U.S. market open, 
that's uh, when the dollar gets a little volatile. So I'll try to stay out then. And uh, at the end of the day, and get to uh, after three o'clock, from three to six, I'll usually stay out of trades too. The spread gets pretty pretty big on the on the pair, so I stay out then. Gina is asking, do you use fibs at all for targets or support resistance, anything like that? I don't. I don't use fibs. Gotcha. Well, that's valid. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not a huge I'm not a huge fib fan, but like I said, the trend. I mean, that's that's what it is. It's just about tracking down, finding the fit. Finding a really good trend. What's is there a particular euro or not euro, but currency pair that you uh, also just shy away from or won't trade at all? Yeah, you know, I found as I open myself up to other pairs, uh, the GBP pairs I find don't always work within my plan because they're pretty mm -hmm. volatile too. And mm -hmm. that could be because of the whole Brexit thing too. But I, I found that I usually shy away from those unless unless it it has to look absolutely perfect. Uh, but then you know you, you have you have to leverage a lot more. For a smaller pip value, um, with uh, the Euro US dollar, uh, NZD USD, and the AUD USD, you get a lot more leverage uh, with your money, which okay. I like. Yeah, AUD USD is a is a wild child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I had a good. I had a. I had a decent trade on that one last night. What was uh, What was the trade on that one? Was it long? I'm guessing it was like a long trade. Yeah, it, it was long. I it. Uh, let me pull that up. had some good news last night so I waited for a retest uh, around I'm on uh, I'm on UTC time so 1925 uh, no 1930 in that in that $5 candle I got in and I got a uh, you know I got a decent amount of pips out of that 1930 I'm looking at that right now so you're pulling in the five minute chart and just zoom out a little bit yeah makes sense I mean like I said you probably you didn't catch the 1830 breakout but you waited for it to break out and pull back and then just started moving again you got in yeah, makes sense. I, I took that. <laughs> that, was, that was a nice trade. I took it. Uh, I took it. You know, it, it rode that top band of mine up for a little while, and then as it started retesting again, I just got out. You know, was, I don't do a whole lot of night trades, but my alarm goes off. I see it. I like it, and I'll do it. So it was a quick. It was a nice, quick, easy pip. Love it, man. I have a trader who's mentioning uh, that they dream of five dollar pips. Their their current pip is twenty cents. What would your advice be for someone who's just trading smaller lots and looking to, to make that growth? What would be your advice? Uh, you, you just have to find that consistent plan, something that works for you. Um, and that, that's what it took for me. I mean, I, I, remember, I remember when I was tr started trading Forex and I was there because you, you, there's so many things you can do and look at and, you know, that you can trade off of and it's overwhelming. I mean, trading is overwhelming. Period. I mean, because there's so much you can do and so much, you know, you, you can have all this knowledge, but if you don't follow it, you're not going to do anything. So it was just, for me, it was just about finding that plan and only executing trades based off one particular plan and, uh, and then slowly build it up, you know, do the same thing over and over and over. I, I would spend the weekend, you know, uh, going through a year's worth of chart data or as much as, I, as much as I could on a five minute chart, but I'd still do it on the, on the bigger charts and I would just test my plan over and over and over again. And uh, even now, for every alarm that I have go off, you know, I'll look at it. I don't take every trade just because I don't have time. Uh, and I may be in another trade if an alarm goes off, but I'll go through it and, uh, you know, I'll determine if it would have been a good trade or not. So that way I'll it's just kind of always work in that muscle, that trading muscle. You know, uh, this, is what, this, this is where I see it. This is what I would have done. You know, this is a good trade or it didn't work. You know, so I can keep track of, you know, what works with what pairs and what doesn't. But it's just being consistent with your training plan. That's that's the best advice I can give you. Man, so you, I mean, but well, here's your other advice too. I mean, you did say that you put in a lot of time in front of the charts. How long are we talking? How many hours would you say you spent on average a week practicing? Gosh, I mean, I still practice. So oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there, there is no. It never stops. I mean, on the weekends, you know, I'm I'm looking at charts. <laughs> and I'm in, and even though I took a trade, I'm looking at that trade again and just trying to ingrain it in my head. Okay, I like it. This is this is this confirms for me, or this doesn't work for me. And uh, I'm when I'm sitting down in front of the TV, or I have nothing to do on a weekend on a Saturday and Sunday. I'm looking at them always. Yeah. The charts charts are always up. Do do forex? Is it uh, is it open Saturday Sunday? No, it uh, shuts off at uh, uh, four or five. Or I guess five Eastern. For my time, and then on Friday, and then it opens back up again Sunday at four, four Central. Gotcha. Here's a big question: Are you going to ever trade anything else other than forex, or is it is it that it from here on out? No, I'll, I'll probably go back into stocks again. Okay. I, I think I'm I'm a lot better equipped and prepared to trade stocks again. So yeah, definitely.
Gotcha. Okay. Very cool, man. Um, any other thoughts just regarding you know forex with your particular trading plan right now? Is there any time that you are going to do a scalping strategy or anything? Have you practiced that? Because I hear that all the time with forex. People are always talking about I mean, scalping. I, I consider mine kind of a scalping strategy. I used to I used to scalp a lot on the one minute, um, but I stopped that after I kind of zoomed in or zoned in on my particular plan that I like. So. Uh -huh. Um, so that's what I stick to. And I could, I consider it a scalping strategy because sometimes I'll be in it, you know, 10, 15 minutes and I'm out. You know, I don't, I don't hold, I, I rare, rarely hold long term. Mm -hmm. Oh, that makes so uh, what's the, what's the, so tell us the worst, after all of this goodness, what's the worst trade that you've taken recently? Uh, let's see. Oh, <laughs> I know. Um, last week I had a 3000 or two weeks ago. I had a three thousand dollar loss. I put a trade on, and uh, I could have sworn that I because I, I sometimes I'm a little sleep sleep deprived. I thought I, I thought I closed, I thought I closed my trade out, and I I woke up at about four and I started looking at the charts again, and I I could have sworn that I closed it out at about one o'clock, you know, one a.m. And I saw I saw the price drop, and I remember going back to sleep thinking, God, thank God I closed it. And I you know I locked in my profit, <laughs> and then uh, I get up. It's you know 7:30. Eat some breakfast. I'm looking at the charts again, and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm, I'm I was up about 10 pips. So I was like, I'm gonna call it a day. And I get in my truck, and I'm going to a customer, and then I pull up my um, I pull up my app on my Oanda, uh, my phone, on my Oanda app on my iPhone, and then I see that I'm negative and I'm down, and I'm thinking, oh my god. So it was hard to keep feeling, and it it sucked. Um, and I I told Jamie about it. I was like, you're never gonna believe what I did. I said, but I made a little bit of it back up today. So it's gonna take me about you know maybe a couple through two or three days to make it back up, which I did. Uh, but that was my worst trade. It was a trade that I still I didn't know I still had on, and it was a three thousand plus dollar loss. You know, my takeaway from that is you told your wife, man, there's a lot of people, I know it sounds crazy, but there's, there's a lot of traders who are like, no, I'm just going to keep this one to myself. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I, I was like, you know what? I, I, I told her one time, I said, when I have bad trades, I'm going to tell you. Uh, and that was a way to hold myself accountable too. So. Yeah. And, man, uh, if, and there's been a couple, there's been a couple times where I've, you know, I've had my, my alarm go off and I've entered the trade the wrong way on mistake. You know, sometimes it's early in the morning. I'm still a little groggy. I'm watching and I get in and I'm like, God dang it. <laughs> I went the wrong way. And so, you know, if I see that, then I get out. I don't try to wait and say, Oh, I hope it does this and maybe I'll be profitable. So, you know, if you see you made a mistake, get out. Yeah. Live to tell, you know, you can do it again. That's right. That's right. Take the, take the loss, tell people about it. Cause like I said, the talking is the therapy, right? The discussion, the <laughs> open and honest. It's, that's the way to go about it, and that's the way to, and that, to keep a spouse happy and then not, not scared that you're trading you know, your, your guy's livelihood. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Yeah, 100%. Very, very important. Awesome, man. Beautiful stuff. Uh, one other really quick question. So, I mean, if that was, if that was your worst trade, which was, you know, again, thanks for sharing, what was your best trade? What was the one that you're like, man, I did everything right. This was just perfect. Everything was good. Do you have one that just really sticks out in your mind? Uh, no, it was. Uh, I, I would say, you know, I, I'll get on a roll every once in a while. Well, I'll I'll be uh, I'll I'll be trading in a certain particular trend, and uh, I buy low or sell high or sell high and buy low. And I've I've had a few trades where I I've done that like three or four trades in a row, you know, eight pips a piece, and uh, it's been a great day. So oh, and I'll have the, I'll have one of those days, you know, once you know every couple of weeks or something, mm -hmm. you know, not necessarily three or four trades, you know, perfect in a row like that, but you know, it's been a few times. Yeah, totally. And is there any, like, do you find yourself going long or short more, or is it just perfectly even? Whatever the trend says, that's what you're doing, and it's pretty much like a 50-50. Yeah, it's whatever the trend says. I mean, I, yeah, I, don't keep a tra I don't keep track of how many times I go long versus how many times I go short, because, I mean, uh, it's, it's always moving in one direction. It's, it's, you know, up or down, up or down. Mm -hmm. so it's, uh, it's, it's whatever the chart shows me. Valid, man. Beautiful. If anyone has any questions for my good friend Jason Chase, feel free to throw it in the chat pane. I'll be happy to relate and uh, relate along. Uh, here's a question that I don't think I've asked anyone. Have you ever done anything with um, binary options? Do you know what those are? I, I don't know anything about them. No. Okay. Do you have I, I've heard of them. Yeah, but I don't know anything about it. 
same. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of them, and uh, you know, I've just never, I've never even looked into it. Because I know I'm just gonna get my email inbox is gonna get loaded with, you know, this law firm, check this out. It just, it, it sounds complicated, so I'm just gonna stay away. Binary options, okay. Yeah, I, I did options once uh, for a while, and that didn't work out too well for me. So, and that's when I first got into trading. So, Gene asking a question: How did you choose Odonda for your broker? How did you choose that one over the other? Um, I, I like their interface. I like their app. The app was great for me. So, it, I could put my indicators that I like on there, and it has a good night mode, and I just like it. I like uh, I like the spread too. You put a certain amount in your account, you get a nice little spread, and it's nice. Love it. Mall, and you're limited. Asking. You're limited here in the U.S. too. I mean, there's only a handful that you can use. True. Very, very good point. Um, with your Bollinger Bands, Hermal was asking, have you tried Keltner or Dosimian Donchian channels at all? I haven't. Mm -mm. Just as purely Bollinger Bands. Yeah, and and, and Bo Bollinger Bands. I mean, it's it's not necessarily a you know out of not 100 percent. It's a good visual for me. You know, it, it helps me see, um, you know, resistance or support, and I use EMAs for support also. Uh, but then I'll also start drawing support. You know, if I see several wicks hitting a certain point, I'll draw some support or resistance and, uh, and use that. Man, it's wonderful. So if, you're, if you had to give an advice to someone uh, for, who's brand new to trading and just wanted to pick a strategy, what would you, what would you tell them to kind of focus on? As far as strategy? Yeah. Oh. Um, I mean, I, I think uh, identifying trends um, is key. And uh, as far as strategy, I mean, I've gone through so many strategies. And you, you just got to try. <laughs> you you got you to try things out. You know, you just, you got to try things out and, uh, and paper trade or trade with, you know, the least amount of money that you can mm -hmm. and just find something that works. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different strategies. I've got a lot of friends and, you know, just like you, your strategies, you know, different from mine. And, you know, there's a lot of traders out there, and I know a lot of guys that trade forex, and their strategies are, you know, com you know, I, I think we're all similar. We would try to buy, you know, buy low, sell high, or, you know, find trends and do that. But you just have to find something that works for you. Yeah, totally. Well, it makes I mean, it makes sense. If I, finding the trends, establish it, and then if it's a good trend, buy on a pullback or, or short mm -hmm. pullback. You know, if yeah. you know, if, it's a, if it's a downtrend. Yeah. The the hard part is you just don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> you don't. You don't. You can't. And you have to, you have to realize that anything can happen. You know, as soon as it starts working against you, or you, you know, the mar I always, I see the market is always giving you information. You've got, to, you've got to be able to perceive that information. You know, you may be long, and you don't want to see that it's telling you it's gonna, that it's gonna turn around. It's gonna go against you. So you got to keep your mind open to realize that oh, well, it's not gonna work. My trade's not gonna work. Don't wait for it to, you know, go down where you're, you know, double or triple or quadruple your loss. As soon as you see that information in the market telling you it's going the other way or against your trade, get out. Yeah, exactly. And I, I don't. I know you probably can't see my screen right now, but I'm just looking at still the uh, Aussie U.S. dollar when it, when it had that really big pop at 18.30. And you know, looking at that particular move for the people that are watching the screen, I mean, you know, Jason didn't take that particular trade. Like he didn't get in on that candle at 18.30 on the breakout. Once that trend was established, volume was there, the moving averages were there. He was getting in, you know, I know you can't see what I'm drawing, Jason, but around this 1930-ish area on this pullback, right? A lot of selling, yeah. pulling back into the moving averages, the trend is strong. He doesn't know if it's gonna bounce or not, but he knows the trend. He goes, okay, trend is bullish, at least on this time frame. I'm gonna get in, I'm gonna set my stop. Let's see if it bounces. <laughs> yeah. I mean the news the news was positive. I forgot what the news was, but and I, I looked at it and just saw that whatever the news was, it was positive on the on the uh, on the Aussie, so that's what I took. You know, you can see your support where that second candle hit or opened after um, after that big move up. Yeah. You know, what's funny is I had an alarm go off uh, before all that, and I was looking at it, and I started to see some uh, some uh, support drawn, um, like at 1710, uh, 1630, and then 1815 right before. But there was news, so there was no way I would have gotten in something like that because. You know, I could easily have got down and tried to do something, and it goes, you know, forty pips down. You know, against mm -hmm. me, against me. That's why I never trade on news. It's, you know, it's, it's you're guessing. Yep. You're, you're gambling. You're gambling if you're trade, trading on news. 
So I waited. I saw that big move, and then I saw some more support print and took it. I love it. That's, that's killer, man. Now, this is a good question. Gene's mm -hmm. asking, do you use bid-ask liquidity levels to make decisions in Forex or just looking at the chart? I just look at the chart. I just look at the chart. I, right. I look at the chart, and then I mark it enter, and then I'm in. Here's a good question for me. Are you going to ever do anything with algos or robots, or is it all going to be manual? Uh, it's all manual. Okay. I, I like I like to be involved. I mean, if I guess if I could, I don't. You know, I I say manual, but <laughs> if I if I could find someone that could, uh, you know, set my set this up perfectly, uh, you know, it would be considered. I consider it. Yeah. I've got a friend that has uh, that has a good bot right now on crypto, and it runs on Bitrex, and you know, he keeps telling me, "You got to try it. You got to try it. We're making money." Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's. But that's the thing. I, I get people to ask me that a lot too, and you know, I've been hesitant for a while to do the algo thing, but it's I mean, it's pretty much fastly approaching. But I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's the manual thing, it just, it just feels good to look at the chart, see the movement, see the candles, play it all that. Yeah, kind of I, I like it because you got to have a feel for what the market's doing, and you know, there's that there's that human element. I, I like to see it, mm -hmm. you know, before I put before I put my money on the line. Mm -hmm. How are, how are the fees for non, uh, Dondo? Are they good as far as commissions? Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, it's less than a pip uh, for me for every trade I do, so it, it's good. Uh, the spread is pretty good. Like right now, the euro spread for me is like uh, 0 0.02, 0 0.03 pips. Mm -hmm. So it's a good spread. It's pretty tight. Yeah, that's nice. Well, my man, I can't believe that was already 40 minutes, but thank, well, you, for, thank you for sharing your insight with us. That was yeah, happy to do it. very helpful. I, I just I love hearing people's uh, you know perceptions and backgrounds and challenges and the hurdles that they've overcome. It's just always a good it's a good breath of fresh air, if you will. On yeah, and, it, and it's 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 been a big challenge. I mean, I'd say as far as at any career that I've been in, I've had two, and this would be my third. It's probably been the most challenging um, that I've ever had, and I love it. The most challenging, and you were you were a roof guy too. Yeah, I mean, I sold roofs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still do. That's that's my main business. I own a roofing yeah. company. Yeah, in the uh, in the Chicago area, you know. Yeah. You know, it's uh, just feel free to check out that if you guys need a roof. Shameless <laughs> 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 pitch. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> how was the how's the snow impact that at all? Like, is it you know, do people ever call you because the snow collapsed the roofs or anything, or is it just purely hail? <laughs> Yeah, I mean hail and retail work. So, That's yeah, never had anything with snow. I've, I've had enough of shoveling snow. I can tell you that. But. Oh, <laughs> well, hey man, Jason, thanks so much for your time. Tell Jamie I said hello, by the way. And we'll do. You're incredibly human. Ah, thanks, man. Great, great yeah. talking to you. I'll, I'll talk to you later. later. All right, man. See you. Right, bye, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jason Chase. I love his story. Like I said, him and I have been trading together. He he gave you all the ugly bits. You know, we we built plans, him and I, and we sat down. He didn't follow any of them. He went through immense amount of pain. He lost tens of thousands of dollars trying to get this right and just put a lot of time in front of the charts, put a lot of work, studied, and then got it. Last year, he was very profitable, did extremely well. And I'm really excited about his future success. Just keep in mind, I do record an interview every single week for those traders in the trading rooms. I do it around this time every single day just to give us a little bit of a break from the market, learn about someone else's progress, life story, struggles, successes. It's really a wonderful opportunity just to meet new traders. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, the FOMC does come out in about 15 minutes. There will be some giant swings in Forex. There will be giant swings in just the broader equities market. I don't personally think I'm gonna take any other day trades today, but I do plan on looking for some dip opportunities out there. Uh, this is the SPY, and I will pull up the hourly chart. And again, right now we've had some really toasty moves. We've had some good gaps again. So this is the hourly time frame, and my buddy Leonard earlier was asking about, or he was talking about the 50 moving average strategy that I use. And so the 50 EMA on the spy has been bullish since the 6th of January. So if you're buying off the 50 on the spy, we're still looking okay. Trend is still relatively nice. I do expect some flashes 
to come in from the FOMC, probably something like that. I'm not saying it will happen, but I do kind of expect us to continue a little bit higher. Axel said, is Bollinger Bands better than using view apps with upper and lower bands? That's a great question, Axel. I mean, that's, I think that'll be kind of a personal preference. It'll be kind of depending on how people feel. I like Bollinger's more than the view app personally, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's gonna be you know, the way everyone trades. I like Bollinger Bands. So Bollinger Bands are what helped us get into this swing trade uh, on MKC. And this was just one based on, uh, you know, it's moving decently well today. We're up a little bit on it, but this is the daily chart right here. And, you know, this was a, purely a Bollinger Band trade. And I say that because you had a white candle close out of the bottom band, which is super rare, right? So for a stock, especially a dividend paying stock, to gap down like that with a huge, bullish candle closing outside the band usually it does pull back into the band you get some buying at standard deviation so that's purely the strategy that i use for mkc i like bulge bands bulge bands are a fun strategy and it just depends on how you use them right you want to practice it one of my other takeaways from that interview with jason was that he spent a lot of hours in front of the charts honing in on what he felt was comfortable what he liked and what he understood and that is a really huge benefit for all of us as traders, really get an idea of what it is that you like. I do want to clear up something really quick before I go. Uh, Greg Gorel, are you still here? He asked me to clear up the pattern day trading rule thing. And just to make sure that everyone's clear on that, I do want to uh, make sure that we're all comfortable and that we discuss that before I part ways. Uh, let me share the whiteboard so I can get a good amount of drawing in. All right, so here's what we have. If you have, if you have less than twenty-five thousand um, dollars, and you live in the U.S., because that does matter, <laughs> you live in the U.S. If you take uh, twenty-five thousand dollars, you live in the U.S. on a margin account. If you take more than three round trips in a five rolling day period, you will get flagged as a pattern day trader. All right, that's pretty much it. Now, if you have a cash account, if you have a cash account, let me move this, give me three seconds, there's something in the way. All right, move this up the way. So if you have a cash account, there is a uh, one to two day settlement period and you can trade until the cash is gone, buying power is dried up and cash settles. For example, if you are looking and taking a trade, let's say you have $15,000 and you take a trade and it eats up $9,000 of your cash for that day. You have $6,000 that you can trade with that same exact day. Same day, no problem. You can take that $6,000 trade, no issues whatsoever. You obviously don't have to, but you can. If you want to carry that $6,000 into the next day, that's fine. This $9,000 will take another business day to settle, and by the very next day, let's say you don't take any trades at all for two days, you'll have your $15,000 back minus or plus however much cash you made from the first trade. Now there are ways around this. Obviously, if you are not in the US, some of these rules might not apply. If you do have a margin account, you can also take trades where you, uh, sorry, hold on one second, I'm having feedback. You can also take trades where you trade let's say on a Monday, then you trade on like a Thursday, then you trade on a Tuesday of the next week, then you trade on a Friday, then you trade on Tuesday again. So there's ways that you can overcome it just by simply not trading all that often. Greg says if you have Robinhood and use instant settlement, that is margin, so that's why you have to buy by the PDT rule, that is correct. 
Axel says trade Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday to get away with the PDT. Is that accurate? So yes, that's kind of how I'm drawing it out. Um, if I'm drawing it out, you realistically can do it where you spread it out over a few certain days to get away with it. That is accurate. Um, I suggest giving a little bit more time than less only because if you do take an extra trade, you don't want to get caught in a bind where you can't exit or you'll get flagged for pattern day trading. So I like to save one in case something gets away from you, all right? Now, one other way around the rules. I did partner, Real Life Trading is partnered with a hedge fund and you do have the access and the capability to partake in and purchase into the fund with $3,000. And if you get $3,000, sorry, if, when you buy into $3,000, that's your risk capital, you will have $30,000 to day trade with. Okay? $30,000 a day trade with, that is the, that's under the professional trading tab. Type in a one, if that's kind of exciting. I think that's a really cool way to do it um, because again, you are only risking your $3,000. That's the amount of money that you can lose. You can't lose more than your 3,000. So when you buy into the program, there are rules and things that are in place to protect so that you don't own uh, and you don't have to pay any more money. Uh, there are two free videos here uh, going through it, talk about how to day trade less than 25,000, talk about this. So um, Sherry says $30,000 right away. Not right away, I mean, it's, it's not, it doesn't get deposited into your checking account or anything, <laughs> right? Doesn't get deposited into your checking account. Um, you have to log into a, the broker, the broker is Revo, you download it onto a PC, and then you have access to $30,000 through that platform. So obviously, you know, it's not just a check that gets handed to you and you trade with it, but you can get access to that after uh, approximately three to four days. Once you log in, sign up, you take a test, right? That test, I wrote it A9 questions long. It makes sure that you know a little bit about what you're doing, you're comfortable with the risk, you get it, you have an idea of how to trade. And then once you take that test, I give you a certification email. I send you a document that certain that I wrote, hand signed and everything, saying, hey, this person's ready to go. And then three to four business days after that, you're in. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Hermal says, is the $3,000, does it remain part of our trading capital or is that the buying price we have to pay for goods? So that is, uh, part of that is part of your trading capital. Yes, that is correct. So there's no additional fees. That is, that's it. $3,000. Technically, it's actually $2,995. <laughs> so it's not actually $3,000. Uh, but yes, $2,995. You get it. That's all of your money. It's tax, tag, title, out the door. That's the full cost. That is it. Boom, bing, bing, bong, boom. So that's pretty much it. Um, and another way, obviously, that I discussed in this video, uh, how to day trade less than $25,000. The other way, ready for this, folks? Day trade options. So you can day trade options. If you have a cash account, um, you can day trade options as much as you want until the money's gone, like I was saying. So that's another thing that people love to do. If they have smaller accounts, they can just simply day trade options. So if you have a cash, if you have a margin account and you day trade options, that still counts. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. It's all about a cash account. The cash is king. So if you have a cash account, you can trade more actively than a margin account if you have $25,000 or less. So just a little, little throwing that out there. Florian says, but if you can only lose 3,000, then your R should be 30 US dollars. So what's the point of having a $3,000 account? Well, Florian, that's not entirely correct. Um, you don't have to have a $30, a $30 account, $30 R. I would suggest it for the first month or two, okay? I would suggest it for the first month or two, but 
after that, you can increase it because uh, even though, yes, you only have the $3,000 uh, that you put in to lose, you have the, uh, the ability to win. So I mean, if you win money, you, you win trading, you build up the capital, you know, works out for itself. Florian says that is 1%. I agree, that's 1% of your risk, <laughs> right? But if you have 3,000, you are allowed to risk more than that. So if you wanna do a $300 R, I mean, again, if you are comfortable and proficient in trading, that technically is 1% of how much capital you have to trade with. So, pretty much it. Chase says, so if I have a margin account and want a day trade options, I must have an account of $25,000 or more. Um, if I have a margin account and want a day trade option, I must have an account of $25,000 or more. In order to not get flagged for a pattern day trader, you just can't trade three round trips in five days. That's the thing. So it's not necessarily how many trades you place, right? Because if you have $25,000 or more, you're fine. But if you have less than 25 grand, you absolutely want to make sure, do you have a cash account or do you have a margin account? Because if you do have a margin account, you can absolutely get flagged as a pattern day trader, regardless of what you trade, if you take too many trades, right? Because if you hold a trade overnight, it's not a day trade. Danny says, on this $3,000 account, do we receive the entire profit? Uh, it is 90%. It's a 90-10 cut. Jay Parr says, Speed Trader, which is a broker out of Bahamas, I believe does not have the pattern day trading rule, or are they still around? Uh, I think it's called Sure Trader. And yes, they do, uh, they are still around, and that's another way to skirt the issue is do an offshore account. <laughs> so yeah, that is, uh, you can. I mean, if you trust putting your money in the Bahamas, cool. I wouldn't personally suggest that, but that's you know entirely up to you. And so what does it mean to be a pattern day trader? Nothing really. <laughs> it's pretty much just a designation that the SEC has that if you have a certain amount of money, uh, you're allowed to do something, and if you don't have a certain amount of money, you're not allowed to do it. And it's it really is just an SEC regulation. So um, anyway, folks, if you have any other questions, we have two full days left: Thursday and Friday. You're welcome to email me, you're welcome to chat with me. I'm here to help. If you want to continue, is it FINRA? It's not the SEC, Greg? Was I mistaken? All right, it's either the SEC or FINRA. I, that makes sense. I can, I can believe it was FINRA. I thought it was the SEC, but it is FINRA. FINRA, not the SEC. Tim says, when did you special end? Monday. Hermal says, does this trading room come with it as a package deal? No. JP says, what are the commissions in the professional trading program? $3.90 per thousand shares. I'll be back, ladies and gentlemen, Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern for Energy Wednesday. Tomorrow, I'll be here all day. Friday, I'll be here. Log in. Let me know if you have any questions. Email me if you need anything. Jeremy at reallifetrading.com. I will answer all of my emails. Ladies and gentlemen, you are amazing. I appreciate you trading with us today. Thank you for enriching lives with me. And until next time, love life, live life, trade it, bye.